Good evening, everybody. Today is August 27th, and I ask everybody to please rise and pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, before we actually get into business tonight, um, it's um, with heavy hearts that I report nice. that uh, we've lost a... Um, uh, retired uh, police officer, uh, Sergeant Dave Armstrong, he put in uh, 24 years uh, on the uh, Georgetown Police Department and I know that a lot of uh, people would remember him through uh, his work with the schools um, and as the DARE officer. So uh, please keep your thoughts and prayers um, uh, uh, for the uh, family and, and for Sergeant Dave Armstrong. Thank you. Okay, uh, before we get into to any of our normal business here, we would ask our health agent, Deb Rogers, to come up and give us a little report on our mosquitoes in Triple E okay. issue. Sure. Thank you. Um, okay, well, as of uh, Thursday uh, morning, we received a phone call from the Massachusetts epidemiologist stating that it was confirmed positive Triple E um, horse here in Georgetown. It was the first um, horse in the state of Massachusetts. Uh, there was a llama in Halifax, but Georgetown was the first horse. So we, um, I made some phone calls between the town administrator along with the emergency management director and, and the super, I just also spoke with the superintendents of the school and Jack from the Northeast Mosquito Control. Um, a code red went out uh, Thursday morning stating that within 24 hours that the town um, would be sprayed throughout. Uh, the spray has normally been conducted throughout the seasons, um, throughout the years. Usually um, the Northeast Mosquito Control will do sections of town um, and as requested, it's a free service if the if residents want to be sprayed also, but normally they do sections, um, different sections, different weeks. The only difference was because they wanted to aggressively uh, try to minimize the adult mosquito and exposure and eliminate as many as possible. It was the decision to just spray the town. So therefore, uh, the chief of police um, sent out the code red stating that within 24 hours the town would be sprayed. We put it on the website and also on our voice mail. Um, and that's about, let's see, um, that's about our, there, there was a couple, we had two people today that um, and it's hard to accommodate everybody, but we did have two people today that um, didn't want to be sprayed. Um, we explained that um, anybody who does not, believe it or not, the majority does want to be sprayed, but the ones that do not want can call the Northeast Mosquito Control um, and be put on the no spray list, list so that way it, once they're on that list, then the trucks will stop spraying while they go by their, their specific residence. Mm -hmm. um, but again, most, most people do want to be sprayed because this uh, Tripoli is pretty serious. So. Um, where are we now? I mean, after the spring has been um, been completed, uh, has the threat level been lowered? Are we still at a uh, high threat level? The threat le level, as far as I know, is still considered critical. All surrounding towns are at high risk. We're still considered critical risk. I don't know when they determine um, Homeland Security. We actually received uh, Thursday confirmation too through them and they're still on the critical list and as of today it still showed critical. I don't know what their criteria is to switch. Um, the only thing I can say is that um, prior to even having this triple E we did a preliminary precautionary measures by putting it on the websites notifying the superintendents and um, pretty much town department stating that uh, we kind of knew that we didn't expect a horse, but we knew that we were probably going to end up with some positive either pools of mosquitoes from West Nile virus or triple E. So we've been trying to warn as many residents as we can to just under precautionary measures that they're the ones who have to really take action too. We can do spraying and try to minimize the adult population, but the exposure, it's each resident needs to, you know, um, try to stay out of the during the peak hours of dusk to dawn or wearing long sleeve pants and clothing while they're out there or using the DEET and the uh, insect repellent also. There, it states that um, for just four days of a small puddle of water can create and rebreed these mosquitoes. So any em you know, emptying gutters and all your 
you know, things that could hold water. So we're so just trying to eliminate it. We're not going to get rid of it until they say the first frost will actually remove these um, mosquitoes. But until then, we just everybody needs to really take you know, precaution. Be, be vigilant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions uh, of Deb? We, we didn't have any um, pools with West Nile, did we? I know we've had that in the past. We have had that in the past. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. Um, West uh, Newbury had Newbury had oh, two New pools okay. on the abutters right into, you know, I mean, mosquitoes really don't know the property line, so right. they're right there. <laughs> okay. So, um, so. And, and Boxford has had West Nile virus. Um, I think all our surrounding towns, we just haven't actually had a positive so confirmation. So that's why we had the alert. That, well, that where you said earlier that you had were warning people on that because of the surrounding right we towns, actually yeah. put surrounding towns um, and Triple E has been found in pools of mosquitoes, uh, Towsfield and through in other areas surrounding. Um, we actually haven't even we haven't had the pool of uh, mosquitoes as I know, but we have had the horse that has been confirmed. So. Was the horse always stable here? I mean, there was no chance. It was, I have did, not heard any difference, okay. so I believe it was stable there. Correct. Okay. Debbie mentioned something very critical. The horse was not vaccinated either. Oh, correct. Wow. And that's another thing that, um, like, when they say Georgetown was the first horse positive in the state of Massachusetts, many horses are vaccinated against Triple E, and this horse was not vaccinated against it. So, um, so this, this horse was kind of like the canary in the coal mine. It, 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 the yeah, fact that it correct. wasn't vaccinated gave us the positive right. correct it was around yeah. yes that is true so will they test again and then they do every friday we get results every friday um whether it be west now virus, they test pools of mosquitoes that they collect and they send them out and test regularly um and and that was another concern was that the how long it the the time frame took but well, i guess and I, this was news to me but um, according to the Massachusetts epidemiologist, when the onset came between that and collecting the sample and then sending the specimen to the epidemiologist, it's not one of the first tests they test. So when this horse had symptoms and, and actually they went, you know, they test for many other panels and pathways first, and that takes a few days. And then by the time they actually, you know, there's like a, it was like a 10 day lag, but that is why they did say the state did say they do not um, hold back. They, they got the results of the day that within, you know, within an hour that we received it too. So that was good to know that we do receive it as quick as we can. And um, again, the, the two people that the, the residents that um, had a few issues with it, stating that, you know, that we should be waiting 10 days and things. The, the idea is, is that um, our, our for public health wise, um, we just want to minimize as, as many mosquitoes as we can in, in the best interest. So the ones that may be against it can call that number and, and be taken off. But many people, I actually had a lot of positive calls where many people want the number to actually be put on a list on a regular routine weekly uh, spray. So. Okay. Uh, the only question I have is uh, since we're still on this critical list, uh, are there any guidelines that outdoor activities for um, sports and stuff that we should be following uh, besides the spraying of, you know yeah what how that works too is um i actually spoke to the epidemiologist about it and asked they said that the health department would probably want to recommend that to um you know at this time before we had sprayed to um postpone and reschedule all sporting until the town was sprayed to help reduce the population and then go with the guidelines of trying to, um, you know, use proper precautions mm -hmm. and, and, and use your, your, D, your, um, your long sleeves and during dusk to dawn, if, during peak hours, if the mosquitoes are bad, to move um, sports either indoors or re-postpone. In the school, we kind of, uh, we've been, they've been excellent to work with. We had a great relationship with them, and they're on board of that too. I've spoken to the principal over at the high school. I've spoken, um, we've been on the board with the superintendent along with Mike Anderson. So they're all aware that, you know, um, at this time we haven't enforced, at, at least the Board of Health hasn't enforced to close down sports at this time. Um, every town is doing it somewhat different on things like that um i know what i think it was last year we closed it down and i don't think it worked out well i think I, I, yeah i don't know well, well I this don't. weekend we did uh i know that the um 
American Legion activities were shut down. Right. The, everything is... got sprayed. Correct. After the spraying. And then... back at it tonight down there. Until the first frost, they're not gone. So it's going to be more of a, a precautionary thing where you just got to use your own judgment on, you know, being safe and careful. Um, I think the recommendation was uh, wait for so many days since the 29th. That well, the, no, the schools have to stay closed for five days. days. Sorry about that. They yep. have to yep. because it's a law that once they've been sprayed, because they sprayed school grounds and everything, yep. which they get allowed to do, but the, by the the federal and state government that regulates the spraying once they spray the schools because you either have to give notice of a 48 hour ahead of time notice for the schools or have no activities outdoor activities you know for sports five consecutive days after spraying so that's what they decided to do just to get sprayed the whole town at the same time but there's no, you so you don't have a any uh, recommendation to uh, continue that past the five days you the, the the board of health is is making a determination that um, the board of health is leaving it into the hands of the school department if they feel it's it's recommended during the peak hours not to be out there during the peak hours when the mosquitoes are out but as far as shutting down the um, sports we have not okay so um, for the folks who have pl uh, planned activities with sports that go into the evening past the t 29th I think it is was the five days after you originally sprayed then they should plan on that they still will have those activities at this as time, long as they're taking precautions yeah, unless 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 the board or somebody else well, unless something else pops up yep. yeah, correct point. correct yeah. I mean it's it's kind of a hard I mean to be honest with you, it's not it's no some people are going to be upset that they can't have two activities for a while but you have a, we have a balance to make in the town and that's to you know I mean and, and people can use their discretion right. too if they feel they don't want to send their children to, yep. to sports or anything either you know I mean you know because unfortunately I mean I think until the first frost it is out there right so regardless if they're they're playing ball or they're outside or they people really have to it's it's all their judgment of you know what they yeah, feel comfortable. I think we just have to once school starts and activities start up, flag football and stuff. We just got to make sure it's that like it's we're uh, continually at least sending that message to you know, yeah. reinforcing it because yeah. I think people will. And get again, and at this time, if, if there's something that either between yeah. the state epidemiologists, the board of selectmen, or the board of health determine that you know it's unsafe, but I mean, there's really not much more okay. besides spraying regularly too. So, got it. Okay. Okay. Thanks for everything you're doing. Okay. Yeah, thank you, thank Jeff. You. Have a good evening. Thanks. Okay, so we have the warrant to be signed. I know that we brought it up. I don't know if you got a yep. chance to look at that. We have minutes from July 23rd and July 26th. Yeah, to approve. This was good uh, bedtime reading. <laughs> wow. <laughs> thick, huh? Yeah. Thick meeting minutes. <laughs> like, wow. Very comprehensive. So, uh, Mr. Chair, if you don't mind, I'd like to move that we approve the general meeting minutes for from our meeting on uh, July 23rd 2012 second okay, we have a motion and a second all those in favor aye. aye aye I move that we approve the meeting minutes for our joint meeting with the school committee that we had on July 26th 2012 second okay we have a motion and a second any discussion on the motion hearing none all those in favor Aye. 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 Okay, so warrants and minutes. Those are down. All right, Mike. Um, we have to talk about the um, ESCO bonds, right? Yes, this is the uh, Qualified Energy Conservation Bond. Mm -hmm. um, and in order to proceed out to, um, to obtain the bond, um, the... Um, IRS and the um, our our financial advisor requires that the uh, the board uh, make this declaration that, uh, that the 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 money the bonds are being used solely for the purpose of establishing compliance with the Internal Revenue Code and. Um, that's that's basically it okay all right well we need to uh, go ahead and approve this in order to uh, start our escrow project right although we've already started right 
we've started and right. we, we need the money <clears> to pay for it. <laughs> uh, right, and um, we're, we'll probably receive our first bill within the next couple weeks. Yeah. So uh, this needs to be signed at least 60 days before we pay our first bill. Okay. Mr. Chair, I move that we uh, approve the declaration of official intent on the town of Georgetown to reimburse certain expenditures from proceeds of general obligation bond anticipating notes and or qualified energy conservation bonds as presented. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Any questions for Mike? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Um, aye, sorry. <coughs> Aye. Okay. <laughs> Three eyes. This is a. Uh, uh, um, it says clerk. Should I sign it? No. It. It, it, it. They're asking for the clerk. And, okay. Uh, Stu's on vacation. Stu's the clerk. So, um, we'll have to get his signature when he comes back. Okay. Really, the chairman can't sign it, huh? The, <clears throat> I think they put. I mean. They're, the clerk is just uh, saying that this, this is a true, yeah. correct copy of the right, declaration. Yeah. We'll track them down. <coughs> <laughs> I'm sure, you'll be in town. Check with Jackie tomorrow, just in case. Um, she needs. Hi, do we? Uh, she's not at the meeting tonight. So well, he sign it? yeah, he's still the clerk. Yeah, he's still yeah. Uh, oh, he's okay. still the clerk. Uh, no, um, if they would have said CEO or chairman, you know, they, okay. I think they said clerk on purpose. There's, there's no uh, uh, rush to get this signed tonight, is there? Do you need as long as you get no, signed? No, like early I said, week? we haven't received our first bill, okay. and we, okay. we need it uh, signed within 60 days of receipt of the first bill. I think this is, Mr. Chairman, the sure. first time. Since Four years of what we've been here that we've really needed a clerk. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, Gary. All right. So um, we, uh, due to again the um, services from uh, Sergeant uh, Armstrong, the uh, chief um, is not here tonight. So I'm going to pass on um, the uh, police department items that are on the agenda. Um, next thing on the agenda is we need to tonight, as a matter of order, open the town meeting warrant. Uh, for Monday, October 29th, 2012. I would entertain a motion to open the special town meeting warrant for 7 o'clock, Monday, October 29th, 2012 is the date. Uh, so moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Discussion, uh, discussion is, this is just opening the warrant. Won't, Janet and Mike will prepare the, um, you know, some of the uh, filler and articles that are going to go in um, for our next meeting on uh, September uh, 10th. So, okay, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, town meeting warrant is open. Um, we have the health agent here. The, uh, I know that I spoke briefly with the police chief on the emergency generator at the middle high school and we got good news on that. It wasn't, wasn't gonna require a large expenditure. Um, so I, again, when he comes in, we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, the policy for the common victual license, that was Steve's baby, so I'm going to let hold off on that until Steve uh, comes back from vacation. And the other one was the policy on the approval of contracts. Again, we're not saying we're reading all the contracts and approving them, just a, basically a, uh, a, uh, a standing operating procedure on how to go about um, looking at the contract and who it should go through and um, what laws you should be following as a board uh, in town, not just our board, but but all boards and commissions. And it's, you know, again, th it's just a policy on how to go about uh, getting things approved and what, what you should be looking at and what you should be following through on. So um, I think this has been on the agenda for more than three meetings now. I have no issue with it. So anybody have any uh, thoughts on doing this well, tonight? Did we get anything on the procurement offices? Does the school have their own or are you the? Mike's the uh, procurement. P Chief Procurement Officer, I can't say that word very well. Yeah, according to the State Inspector General's office, that the Chief Procurement Officer of the town is responsible for 
the bidding and uh, the approval of bidding for schools as well as town. Right. So how does this work? Does this work in in a certain way, uh, if I may, Mr. Chair, sure, with, with your workload or anything? I mean, do you see any? Um, well, it, I can, as it's, as the chief procurement officer, I can, um, I, I wouldn't use the word deputize, but I, I can delegate, and I, I certainly, I, we're not planning on doing anything really differently than what's going on, but um, there needs to be a little more cooperation. Uh, uh, not cooperation, but coordination between the town and school on pro procurements. Uh, we've, I mean, we missed the opportunity to piggyback on the school's uh, energy buys in the past. We we now are doing it, but we yes. didn't know they were going out to bid uh, for energy. Um, they've been doing. Uh, office supplies that by copy paper by the truckload and we weren't we are now aware of it but we haven't been uh, it just it's not a uh, power grab or anything like that it's just a coordination it's a matter of saving money too absolutely yeah I mean keeping our costs down and being efficient as a town so um, so, so the the staff over at the school is proficient. They know the regulations. Um, it's just the the fact that we need to have a, the CPO, Chief Procurement Officer, uh, involved in these contracts. So, so this this policy is uh, um, it's a reinforcement of the existing MGL, so there's really nothing on it that is specific to the Georgetown. There's Georgia. nothing, right, new. right, right. But right. It, it, you know, some departments were going out and contracting on their own. Right. We've had not. Ju I mean, I'm not talking about the school. I'm no, talking about had town departments. And we've had issues in the past. Right. <laughs> right. So okay. uh, this this just puts a policy down so everybody can follow it. Yeah. That's no, I don't know. Can you enforce it? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, as CPO, if they don't follow the regulations, the, the contract is null. I, I mean and, that. And when, 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 when a bill comes, it won't be paid right. if it wasn't gone through here. So, so I would suggest that if we approve this tonight, that this goes out to every department with a, with a nice, you know, small little memo from you that says, you know, um, it's just basically reinforcing what we're doing, you know, in, in terms of starting to communicate and coordinate better. Pretty much. Absolutely, yes. Okay. All right, so. Chair, I move that we accept the. Approve. Uh, we approve the policy on approval of contracts as submitted. Can I second? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the motion? Uh, if I may, just to say yes, it's. Uh, move in the right direction I believe there you go agreed and again Mike will follow up with a you know uh, a memo and a copy of the policy to all boards and commissions in town right okay all those in favor aye 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 okay great good work on that um, fall and uh, winter meeting dates we have October 1st 15th and the 29th which is the special town meeting November 5th 19th December 3rd I would ask for the next meeting on September 10th that we start our meeting at 7.30 rather than 7. I have an obligation, a fundraising obligation, and I may be a little bit late, so I would ask that we start, if it's okay with everybody here, that we start the meeting at 7.30. Is that, sure. that okay with everybody? That uh, next The meeting? 10th, yeah, September 10th. I thought we were scheduling an executive session, or we? No, okay. uh, meeting after. Okay. Okay? Yep. Gives us a chance to uh, it's okay. review the documents. Um, Okay, Mike has some issues, not issues, but some things to go over with us on the budget and possibly talk about free cash if that's on the agenda tonight. It's part, as part of my um, um, town administrator's report, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, pass that to Bruce, please. Um, well, first of all, 
Um, you've all received a copy of the uh, last end of the year budget uh, report um, as of June 30th. Um, and it showed that we underspent or had $308,562 from the department budgets that was that was unspent, uh, which is, is good, very good. We also had $34,031 in uh, unanticipated revenues. Um, or revenues came in higher than we anticipated. Um, so we had a, a budgetary surplus excluding the reserve fund. The reserve fund was carried over. It was part of the um, free cash from the previous year, and we put it in the reserve fund, as you'll remember, uh, because, number one, we didn't know if the uh, override school override would pass, and if it didn't, we were expecting um, quite a few layoffs, and our unemployment costs would have could have been uh, a lot higher than the hundred thousand dollars we had been spending. It was estimated it could be as high as four hundred thousand dollars. That didn't happen, luckily. So we we get to pocket, you know, put that four hundred fifty-seven thousand seven hundred sixty-nine back into free cash, on which. On, is on top of the 308,486 that was the balance of free cash after town meeting in the spring. So um, we and th this hasn't been certified. It'll be certified in in September, but uh, the estimated free cash is going to be one 1.1 1 .1 million dollars. Quick the, quick question on the reserve fund, Mike. At 457, 769, uh, we budgeted. The budget was 542, so we did spend some reserve. We money did on you know extraordinary items that we didn't. Some of the storm expenses that came through, and you know yes. if I remember correctly off the top of my head, just some of the items. So um, the actual number was 542. So we spent about uh, about about 75, 80 thousand. Okay. All right. Good. Right, that's great news. I mean, uh, that's awesome news to be honest with you. Um, yeah, of, of that 308 of uh, budget line items that were not spent, um, I wanted to point out that uh, uh, we had a surplus of $18,000 under town council expense. Um, the excessors expenses and they, they've seemed to manage to do this every single year they've re, they returned or did not spend ten thousand six hundred dollars of their expense money um, the uh, the the bulk of the money as in most years came from insurances they're very hard to uh, predict because we're putting the budget together before we know what the bill's going to be mm -hmm. so we have to estimate um, and we had a hundred and thirteen thousand left over in the uh, health insurance line item um, but out of 2.2 million dollars that's that's yep. still a small percentage mm -hmm. uh, and then we were um, fortunate in workers' comp, we had uh, almost twenty-eight thousand dollars unspent in the workers' comp, uh, and unemployment insurance was was very uh, good this year. Um, we were spending over a hundred thousand dollars a year, and this year we only spent seventy-seven thousand, uh, which gave us a twenty-two thousand five hundred dollar. Uh, surplus in that item so just those three insurances oh and then the dental insurance was uh, returned sixteen thousand dollars but the uh, uh, 
the health department also had eighty-seven hundred dollars in returned expenses uh, in, in unspent expenses, and even the tiny council on aging budget of twenty-one thousand eight hundred and twenty-eight returned fifty-eight hundred dollars. Really, in it for their expenses. Right. So uh, we have very frugal uh, department heads. Uh, even the ones that I, I just mentioned the the high ones, uh, everybody had unspent money in their budgets. Good. So if I uh, if Mr. Chair, if you don't mind, just a quick question. So we're looking at uh, a potential of over uh, one million dollars in new free cash going into uh, the, the uh, this year, and in addition to that, we still have four hundred fifty-seven thousand. No, that's included in, that's all, that number of 1.1 yeah. 1 .1 is all inclusive. It includes, I, um, I, I, that's why I highlighted it separately. I, I wanted to first look at just the actual budget expenditures and revenues, because um, we knew the reserve fund was artificially high to begin with, because we normally only carry 95,000 in the reserve fund. But uh, we we should have had you know seven hundred and sixty five thousand in free cash, but the revenues are, were uh, came in higher of thirty four thousand right. And that yes. that thirty four thousand has nothing to do with the money that we got back from the assessors for cleared off cases. That's uh, correct. Court yep. cases. Okay. No, it's just. Uh, um, you know, abatements, uh, uh, outstanding or accrued abatements or whatever it was. No, nothing. Because we split that between the STAB fund and capital fund, right? Last, last year we did, yeah. yeah. Okay. I talked to the, the assessors, um, although that, that was, they, they've established, uh, or their policy is to withhold five years of, uh, of funds. Um, and uh, however, they uh, they had a large uh, surplus for the country club golf course uh, appraisal, which uh, the state board of assessors found in our favor. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to hold on. So they may. So there could be potentially some money, additional money coming from that account. Although do, are those are appealable decisions, it's been appealed and so we, we still we have to were, reserve for it. No, we oh. we won. Okay, all right. Uh, that one case was about forty forty thousand dollars that was in the reserve that we would have had to pay back to the. Uh, well, I, I think we're a little off the off the topic as far as you know. Yeah, I think by question I, it, the, <laughs> let us down a path. To, We'll, we'll, we'll review that when we get to the budget season. Yeah. Which is fastly, uh, fast approaching. It is. <laughs> so I, uh, I got to tell you, I'm not following this. I mean, I think I understand what the, the net number is of 1.108848. How are you arriving at that? I'm just, I'm not sure. I, I see expenses of 308, a revenue surplus of 345, of 34, for a total of 342,593. That's, um, the, the lines didn't show up in the. That's, uh, that's unspent money from twelve. Right, I got yeah. that. And then this is the the part that this is the new new free cash from the previous year. Right, three four two. FY twelve. Okay, got that. The four fifty seven. Seven sixty nine. Was, in the reserve fund in the budget. So you're adding those two together to get the eight hundred three six two. Correct. All right, that's what we're missing. There you go. That's and then we had money. And then three oh eight. Got it. Okay. Now let me ask you, Snow and Ice. Are we up? Uh, are we all set with fully funded Snow and Ice? Or is any money out of this one point one going to come out for prior Snow and Ice that we? No, that we're all. That, fully that's where today. you know that ninety thousand. Some of that, uh, we paid that off. If we, you know. Right. So there's no outstanding accrual for that. We're we're good. We're good. So the only the only uh, snow and ice we have to worry about is what's coming up in thirteen next year. Yeah. Uh, uh, <clears throat> above above and beyond what we budget. Correct. Cool. All right. Good. That's okay. great. That's good news. That's very good news. 
So just so we're clear on this, when we say new free cash, we're including the unspent reserve from last year. Yes, That's sir. right. Okay, so it's not 1.1 in brand new new free cash this year. It is what was left over in the reserve account last year and the unexpenditure amount of money. Just want to make sure people are clear on that because when I hear 1.1 million of free new free cash, the first thing I think is we didn't spend 1.1 million dollars in, in our expected. Exp uh, Expenditures oh, this year. There's two items in there. Yeah, we didn't that, have that so, carry over the right. That's other why budgets. I, I broke it out yep. the way I okay. did. Okay, got but, it. But but when it when it comes down to it, we have 1.1 million in our hands. I I think that once it's certified. Once yes. it's certified. Yeah, good. Well, that's great news. Um, okay. Um, anything else, Mike, on the town administrator's report? Uh, no. Okay. Okay, next thing on our agenda is uh, we have a uh, request from the, uh, the clerk, town clerk, to appoint, and I'll read them, um, for the special, uh, excuse me, state primary to be held on September 6th. The following uh, people as poll workers, Elizabeth Davis, Davidson, Warden, Precinct 1, Star Anderson, Warden, Precinct 2, Etta Hallowell, Warden, uh, Precinct 3, Beverly Knapp, Pat Duggan, uh, Carol Chenard, Kathy Sachs, Lee Messner, Joe Young, Pat Lesner, Robert Davidson, Margaret Weaver, Cynthia Tardiff, Lawrence Mintz, Robert Kennedy, Nancy Anderson, Kathy Roach, Kathleen Roach, uh, Arthur McDonald, Alan Hollowell, Sandra Bronk, Steve Epstein, Jeanette Liang, Pete Zybel, Margaret Anderson, Ron Marshall, and David Bogdan. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the uh, poll workers aforementioned on uh, the uh, state primary, which will be held on Thursday, September 6th. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so the ayes have it. Um, I think we have covered everything, and again, it was a uh, quicker meeting than we anticipated because the uh, we, the police chief wasn't able to attend and um, we passed on the uh, common victuallers uh, um, agenda. Anything else? Uh, any new business? Any other new business that I've missed that needs to come in front of the uh, board of selectmen tonight? Mr. Chairman, just the reminder that um, there's another. Uh, we're going out to bid for a bond. Uh, and we need septic no no uh, bid for for the bond for okay. to renew all our bands and to pay for the uh, things we uh, raise and appropriated at town meeting okay and, and we need uh, bids gonna go out through our financial advisor next week but we need the majority of the board to sign off on the authorization to go out to bond this is different from the ESCO bond. Okay. So it's for the town meeting, uh, town town warrant items. And there's Peter Durkee's truck on that and yes. so on and so forth. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And, so. And, and we're renewing some other bands that we, like for the feasible, school fe feasibility study. Okay. Um, so, uh, but we need signatures Wednesday afternoon. Okay. All right. Three signatures. Okay. So I think. I don't uh, I'm going. I'm uh, traveling. Well, we'll try to get a hold of Stu and Steve, Steve and they should be back. Morning, hopefully, back Wednesday night. And we'll get those done. Okay. All right. Any other new business? Uh, I feel like I forgot something, but <laughs> if I may, Dave. Sure. With looking at this free cash, and we've got a warrant open for a special town meeting. Mm -hmm. Just wondering. We've talked about a better policy in the past about funding capital improvement. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if this might be a good time to look at. I mean, we perhaps cannot create a line item. We'd want to do that on a spring town meeting, but we could consider putting some of this aside. Well, if you look at the budget, well, Gary, there's a, there is a, a pretty big sure number in there. there. Well, there, there was a line item created last year, but right. I mean, it doesn't really go like I don't know. The year before, we put the funding in on a special fall town meeting. Mm -hmm. and what happened 
because it was very small and when it rolled around for them to do the work, there was really no funding. Right. So are we going to look at that? For well, I, I was looking at town meeting this year. Yeah, I mean, I, I was looking at it today though. I thought the number was pretty big um, for the, in the 2013 budget. I don't know. Do you have it in front of you, Mike? No, I don't. If you look it at was the, like the two, yeah, two forty. Yeah, it was two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, it was like two hundred fifty thousand, two hundred forty thousand dollars already in for fiscal thirteen without spending any of this. It's already in there. Um, matter of fact, that I might even before we did the fifty. Right, it's it's big. It's a much bigger number for the two thousand fiscal thirteen budget. The number is I saw it today, um, was a lot larger than we've normally put in there, and that was part of what FinCom wanted to do. Capital improvement projects um, and their operating expenses. $182,500 is already in the budget for capital improvement projects but for 2013. But didn't that get approved? Those, what about those items that got approved at the spring town meeting? Didn't they come out of that line item? They, they did. Yes. Right. They haven't been accepted. So, it's, yes. so, so it's gone then, is what you're saying? That's pretty much appropriate? So it's it's both okay. of them, yes. Okay. Yes, so there's nothing for them to work with. Okay. A future. That's what I'm thinking yeah, about. Yeah, I'm all for it. All, I'm all for it. I mean, I again, I, this isn't certified, so we can't really do much with it. No, yeah, not, it would be, but it will be certified will by, be. by... Right. Well, let's start thinking about that. Maybe let's connect with CIP then and see what, what the need is. And finance also, yeah. I think. And finance can be too. Oh. Yeah. All right, yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. Absolutely. Um, taking a look at that. And we have an SOP that says we want to look at, also take a look at the STAB fund too. Yes. You know, and I wouldn't, you know, if we could squeeze some money out for the STAB fund, I'd, I'd be ecstatic about that. Um, again, we have to take care of, what, you know, the projects that are at hand. Agreed, Gary, 100%. But I'd also like to put some money in the STAB fund if we could. Oh, I agree. I'm not saying we need to do it all. I'm just, yeah, I, I would like to see a policy of us at least start putting a certain percentage of our. Right. And we have an SOP on that, that, right? We have well, an SOP. 25%. 25 yeah. uh, free cash. 25. I, I'd like to. Yeah. Yeah. I'd personally like to see a percentage of the annual budget, not the free cash. Right. Oh. Well, bigger, I mean, yeah, well, it's a big I, fight. <laughs> again, I, I would well, say let's get that, let's get that yeah. out there and let's work with FinCom and work with Mike and uh, have those discussions. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Okay, any other new business to. Uh, Come in front of the board of selectmen tonight, since there's nobody in the audience. I don't think anybody's going to pipe up. Can, so. I, yes, can I also ask a, any update on the any school building projects? I know there was a lot about unanswered questions about the funding and then the dates. So are we still moving along as I know as we're of our last yeah, meeting? Yeah, we're working on uh, plan design. I know that the uh, schematic design, almost the ex <laughs> schematic design. Um, there was an email that I saw there with an attachment. I hadn't had a chance to open it yet, but I'll be taking a look at it. Um, there was an update in our packet on that budget, right? Wasn't there a little bit of a, on some of the numbers I've seen? Um, but again, nothing really um, to, to report. We have not met. Uh, I think our next meeting is next week. So we have no answer from uh, MS, Mass School Building Authority on anything? Or? As far as what, what specific question? Well, we went before them on the, um, they were having a meeting, I believe, on August 8th. There was a proposal, and they had so much time, I guess, to get back to us with an answer. That, that email David was referring to uh, came in today, I think. Um, yeah, I saw it. it, it I it's a response to our... The, uh, MSBA has questions to the submittal, and we have to get back to them on several. They, they approved a, a, a lot of what was submitted, but they, they still have questions on certain items, like square footages of certain uh, things. But m the majority of it, I, I read it quickly today, was uh, they're, they're good with it. So. Um, I didn't see any questions that were, um, you know, that would present a roadblock to moving forward. They just wanted clarifications. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to open it. I saw it with an attachment. Um, so as far as that goes, Gary, I, I can't really an answer okay. anything yeah. too specific. Uh, again, we're going to be having a meeting. I think it's next week um, to cover, you know, kind of update where we're at. So if you want to come by and okay. Consultants are working on responding to the inquiries, okay. and I'm sure they'll have the answers by by next week's meeting. Okay. Um, next meeting is September 10th. Again, 7:30 p.m. 
has starting a half an hour later, and hopefully we'll have the chief in and we'll be able to clear up some of these items that were on the agenda for tonight. Nothing earth shattering, but um, <clears throat> just some maintenance items, I guess. Okay, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, so moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Thank you. Right, so that, uh, million bucks. That means that this town's ahead by about a million bucks. <clears throat>